that everybody wants to participate and have their questions asked and we try to do our best inshaAllah and uh, always help me at nurmuhammad.com communicate with, with us and, and keep the line of communication open as far as what's happening, what's going on, issues that you have and, and issues that have been resolved. Resolution is always a, a good form of communication, not just saying the problem but saying, oh alhamdulillah this has been resolved because people complain and complain and complain but they don't ever tell you the good news that things have <laughs> resolved and their life is, is not in a crisis anymore. InshaAllah Allah give us a resolution in all our difficulties and that our families and our children and our communities to be safe through these immense uh, dark days inshaAllah. To the love and ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad What do we got? Mm. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi if one takes a picture while in a state of wudu and then posts the picture on a wall or social media can they still be affected by negative energy? Yeah you take a picture and you're in wudu <laughs> mashallah <laughs> and then you post it on social media yeah the concept of, <laughs> of, of the picture and not a drawing, the, the diff, these are different realities. The picture is attached to a soul and either you can draw the soul or someone can draw your soul. So that's the, the problem is the, your, your surah, your, your face and the image that you're posting is actually you. So it's attached to a soul and the magician or nefarious people they can pull you through that. So they can look at an image and begin to cast themselves towards that person and to inflict harm and, and difficulty upon, upon the person. And if they're not trained, means that when Allah everything is, is by a permission, by ijazah. So when the shaykhs have an ijazah means that it's known that they're going to now put themselves out. As a result they must have a heavy amount of spiritual protection that protects them against nazar, against every nefarious uh, imaginable and unimaginable difficulty. So that has to be with an ijazah and a permission that Allah is going to then give that protection. So the one who doesn't have that is very reachable, so they merely meditate on that person and they begin to send themselves towards them and they can inflict energies and difficulties and hardships. And that's based at Allah. So don't say, oh well, Allah says you can't do it. No, no, Allah says that uh, shaitan works with Izzatullah, Izzat the Rasul, Izzat al Mu'mineen. He has to get permission from all three. And that's how the, the concept of shayateen is actually working with Izzatullah from Holy Qur'an Allah al Kareem describes the shaitan works with the permission of Allah the might and power from Allah from Prophet and from mu'mineen. So with that permission Allah is allowing them to operate so they can come and begin to inflict hardship and the way of spirituality is a way of humility in which we don't want to to manifest, we don't want our, our faces out where they're not necessary and we don't know who has a bad nature or jealous nature or, or envious nature or why you have hair, I don't have hair, why you have this and I don't have this, why you have a beard and I don't have a beard. So it could be anything that people are thinking, why you have money and I don't have money. So all of these hasads and all of these characteristics are energies that are going back and forth and that's also by people whom don't have a bad intention. So it's not only magicians but just people, oh wow look at all the things they have, I don't have that. And just the, the sadness and sorrow or envy or enmity from their heart and soul is like woof, sends a laser out to people and hit them with a lot of difficulty. And the most amount of difficulties and bombardments are these energies of hasad and, and, and nazar and all these characteristics. And then they put their children out there which God forbid, I don't know why anybody would want to put their children on social media. When the adult can't protect themselves the children have absolutely no protection. 
And the children's are much more nefarious, much more evil people take these images of children, target them, try to find them, kidnap them, use them for every type of uh, horrific understanding. So this is not something that it's a devil's playground and if you're not equipped to play I would stay out of that playground. But for, for energies and, and the purpose of understandings then it's a part of the spiritual training that keep the energy of hasad down and that's why all the protections against hasad. That when, when we use the, the blue color and they have what they call the evil eye and the external ulama say, oh this is what only Allah protects, this is the most uh, ridiculous and childish statement that anybody could ever state. Because all of that is, is, is by Allah, everything is by Allah. We can end every discussion saying, it's by Izzatullah. But that's not how Allah operates, He wants us to understand, He wants us to seek a knowledge. So the knowledge of hasad is energy. When somebody casts an energy from their eyes, willing and unwilling will give people the, the benefit of the doubt and say, it's unwilling. And they look at you and say, MashaAllah in their heart, why you have such a handsome appearance? and you look like you're so wealthy or you're well to do, there's an energy that's coming from them. And if you're not trained that energy hits you, makes you to then be sick, makes you to be in difficulty, makes you then to be depressed. Because where's the energy going to go? This negative energy is moving towards you is what they're looking at. So then the concept of the evil eye was that we, we understood from awliyaullah that blue has a deflective nature and that's why they would make it with this bright blue and a little black dot in the center so much so it looks like an eye to catch the evilness of what you're sending they want to catch it in that blue. So when they wear firuz, turquoise and blue, blue is, the, is a nature of a color that is deflective, it will pull that nazar and it will bring it on to the blue and not onto you. So we'll make a statement <laughs> nice. that for nazar put it on the blue and not and on you, we'll make a t-shirt. Yes. Alhamdulillah. The That's the reality of the blue. So it's not about the, the, the blue symbol and it has some sort of uh, hard power or something, no. But the nature of the color it will pull the nazar of what that person is looking or potentially look at. So many times people who wear the firuz and the blue, it cracks. They get a stone, they go around a person who they think, oh has you know a lot of eyes and envious eyes and it cracks. The, the ring cracks, the necklace cracks, the blue cracks. So there's a, there's a reality in everything and Allah has given for every sickness its cure. The tariqahs and the shaykhs they understand that, zahiri they want to immediately put the equation as, no, no everything is only but Allah's power. But that, that is true and that ends all discussions. But Allah wants for us is, hey use your understanding and learn the system, learn why hasad is dangerous for you, learn how to defend yourself against hasad. So then you keep a low profile in life. You wear the blue color to deflect from these things and if you have a new home or you have something new that you think people would have a, a envious look at it, you make a little bit of a damage before somebody else damages. So we said many times you have a nice brand new home, you want to invite people to your home, put a flower pot outside broken and break the flower pot. And then people are coming in looking, oh wow, look at this house, <laughs> look their flower pot is broken. <laughs> so means all oh, their nazar went on to that. So yeah, that's, this is the, the nature of human beings being spiritually powerful and having no understanding how to use it and how they're abusing it. But tariqahs and the shaykhs they know it, so they teach their students, no, put something broken in the front of the house and that will take the eyes of people off of your home. And then you put the, these, these blue colors up that they have nice images in Turkey and nice designs for them. If you don't want to take a marker with a nice blue piece of paper and <laughs> mark a big b blue bullseye, it's not as attractive and appealing but it will have the same thing, it will pull the eye towards looking at that. 
And that's the first energy that it'll send on to that instead of to the person inshaAllah. Mm. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum Salaam So is it okay to share pictures of our kids via text to family members? Yeah, via text to family, yes, inshaAllah, that you send to each other and, and you know, alhamdulillah. People who, who share too much and pictures that were not requested, again, not a good idea. So always, always you have to be conscious of everything. I think there's a, a phrase from Imam Ali Salam that, don't talk about hair to the one who has no hair, don't talk about children to the family who have no child. Don't talk about health to the sick. Why? Well because have a consciousness. You're going to open a, a, a can of enmity on you when the person is sick and you're always uh, posting pictures of how healthy you're jogging and, and, and doing marathons, their hasad is going to come towards you. Always talk about children to a family that don't have children then that's not you know using a hikmah and a wisdom that to have enmity and hasad against the person. So everything with a, with a state of wisdom, I don't need to send so many pictures of my kids especially if they didn't ask for it. If they wanted to see how is this child then alhamdulillah they asked, you send the photo inshaAllah. As Salaamu -salam Alaikum Sayyidi <coughs> Walaykum As Sayyidi, when following the tariqah and remaining silent to be nothing, how can we remain silent and discipline our children? <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one, especially if your kids are watching the, the same tariqah <laughs> videos with you. <laughs> so, uh, hold on Baba, hold on, what does Shaykh say? Sit down please, don't do nothing. <laughs> yeah. No, as you can't. The, the discipline of the children is, is, a, is a different subject. We said before, this is a path of humility that <clears throat> when we're operating from our nafs, so when adults are engaged in a, in a battle, a discussion, an argument, it's the ego. And the ego wanting to win a discussion, uh, uh, have a resolution, those are the ones we're talking about. The disciplining of children is our responsibility from Allah This is a cute little wolf because these kids are wolves. But the cubs are cute and if you don't discipline the cub, he's going to grow up into a wolf and he's going to eat you and everything around you. So that becomes the danger. Now look where they'll give birth to their own master. We are at that state now of every hadith from Prophet described that they gave birth to their own master, means that there are places now where the children are so violent and so abusive they beat and kill their family members. So those were children too. And we know that everything is based on conditioning. If you don't condition and discipline then what set of rules and laws would people be obeying? And Islam has a very strong level of discipline. Just look at the, the Islamic society and the Islamic culture, all this uh, abstaining from drinking, smoking, from all these bad actions, bad talking, bad characteristic, bad events. So as a whole we live a life of and try to live a life of discipline. So it's much easier to start with the children and, and keeping them within the ocean of discipline and good manners and, and good characteristics so that they are raised and tamed by that character. So often we're very surprised, we go to centers, Islamic centers, we go to our own center and the children become very wild. And it's interesting because every child in the West has to go to a library. And why is it when they go to the library everybody understands library voice, enter the library voice and the kids all understand library. Why have they come to a, a mosque, they yell and scream and jump on all the furniture, jump everywhere, why? Why weren't they disciplined to understand, well, who cares about library? This is much more holy that keep masjid boys, shh, <laughs> be quiet, don't jump on anything. It's a part of a discipline and an ihtiram and a respect 
If you don't teach that now, you, you think at 15 they're going to respect the center and the masjid? No. But they're going to respect the library. For what? Allah is going to be pleased with you, mashaAllah, your children though they have such a wonderful respect for libraries. No, they have to have respect for Allah for the masjid, for everything holy, you're praying, you're doing namaz, you're doing zikr. So it's a matter of conditioning. If you condition them, we're going like masjid boys, masjid boys, very quiet, very quiet. You bring very soft toys for your own children, little cushiony toys, you don't bring you know metal clamping toys that <laughs> bow, 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 <laughs> in the back there, they're playing tambourines in the masjid. You put very, very soft cushiony things and they play, they stay quiet, masjid boys, masjid boys. Oh, after two years you've conditioned these children that become like angels. But our life is about conditioning inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Uh, Sayyidi, my five year old daughter is asking if she can dance while listening to the nasheeds. Sorry for the question, but I prefer not to let her, and I told her that. Dance and turn the nasheed, I don't know. I don't, uh, I, I, we don't encourage dancing per se. If you want to learn the sama and a spiritual movement, the, the desire to have a spiritual movement in a sort of a spiritual association is, is one thing. But the, 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 the asking of dancing and things that are, are not uh, uh, according to Islamic understandings. You can learn how to do the sama on our website. We have the spiritual whirling and the sama, and that's a reality of how the soul moves counterclockwise, and the soul is always in that state of circumvallation moving. And that can be the energy that people are feeling, a euphoric state. And dance and movement has and produces an energy, and that's why shaitan uses that. Every movement from humans has a power. If they move in a spiritual movement, they're unlocking spiritual powers. So when you move counterclockwise and you're whirling counterclockwise, you're imitating the movement of your soul and the soul leaving the body. When you begin to dance and the movement of dance begins to excite the more nefarious creatures that are living and watching all around because the energy you're producing and then it excites those beings. As a result they encourage then more movement, more dancing, more shaking, more wiggling, all of the appropriate, inappropriate movements of the body. Those nefarious energies are encouraging that because when humans move they produce an energy. And we can go deeper into that at a later time. But that's why shaitan encourages people to dance, and especially women. When they move they produce an energy. As a result of that energy becomes very sexualized for the jinn world. And as a result they encourage them to move it more, move more, and that produces a nefarious and very negative energy in their world for them. And that's why they encourage these people to do that. And that's why Allah forbade that, that don't produce that energy and don't be a source of that energy. So that's why the abstaining from the movement because the movement is producing an energy from a world that people don't understand and from creatures and beings that live all amongst us inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh. Walaykum As Salaam uh, Sayyidi, how can I protect my children from evil eyes and bad energy? Keep your children from evil eyes and bad energy by, by the ta'weez, by, by not promoting pictures of them and uh, uh, no, not showing things off to other people. So alhamdulillah just living a life of, of, of humility and uh, and uh, low profile, inshaAllah, that should be the best, the ta'weez, the spiritual practices, teaching the children early in life about wudu and, and protecting their energy. So inshaAllah, and it's a matter of uh, the children are not putting themselves out there, it's more the parents that continuously want to post and brag about 
And that's when we keep a life that's more humble and, and low profile as a result, less people trying to look and have enmity, enmity and envy at them inshaAllah. So it's a matter of just uh, keeping a lower profile inshaAllah. SubhanAllah rabbika rabbil azzata amma yasifu wa salaamun al mursaleen Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen illa sharaf al nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ashabi kiram wa la mashaykhina fi tariqatan ashbandiyatan aliyyah wa sayyidu wa sadatina wa siddiqina al-fatiha.